key issue that all these companies face is distribution. It's just like, how, how do you get tens of millions of people to, you know, start using your thing? So uh, as you're creating something with this new water or this new sort of mix, how fundamentally different do you make it versus make it feel so familiar that it's invisible and people are like, oh, my thing just works better, but they don't even notice, right? And the OS providers are in this really important but special position in the market where they, they're actually incentivized to make it seem like it's just smarter. It's all just like working better inside. But if you're an app developer, and I think Granola is a great example of this, is you have to strike that balance between being familiar enough, but also being transformative enough that people are going to give it a try, right? You know, when I tell people about Granola, they're like, John, that sounds great, but I use fill in the blank, or I have my own workflow. Right. Everybody has a workflow around note taking. We're seeing a lot of these apps sort of like sparkles are becoming sort of a visual indicator of AI. And I think that that's telling because they're kind of like, you've got to have some of that pixie dust, right? There's got to be some magic in there that people go, oh my God. I've just, I mean, I, I feel like when I use granola that I have sort of like superhuman capabilities, right? I just feel like it makes lets me do shit I couldn't do before. I have a couple of thoughts here. I, one, I don't think the interfaces we've been using for a long time will be what we are using five years from now. I also probably don't think that a lot of the interfaces we're using for these brand new products will forever be the interfaces, especially for the ones that are more autonomous and going and doing things for us. But yet we're seeing them put in places that are somewhat familiar. If you think about going to a touchscreen keyboard for the first time, same exact keyboard, kind of new, kind of not. And so I think that we're in that similar transition. We have companies from the last camp. One is doing scheduling and they're doing it entirely within your email. And so you're in the most familiar place you could be with the most familiar behavior you could, you could be doing. We have another that is doing children's entertainment via FaceTime. There's visual and audit auditory kind of data being captured from the user itself. Instead of something happening at me, it's happening kind of with me. Um, but again, super familiar interface, especially for a little kid. Little kids are FaceTiming their grandmas and their aunts and uncles. When you talk about UI and its direct correlation to UX, I think what we're seeing from most users of these lowest common denominator AI products is that they are lowest common denominator. They're relatively generic and without some way to kind of uh, feed in your own data, especially like a low friction way. Getting ChatGPT to write something specific to me is really difficult without a lot of prompt engineering. Granola has made it really clear that you shouldn't let it run like you, like you let Otter or Fireflies run, right? You should really be doing your best to kind of inject keywords into it because my notes at the end of this call should be different from all of your notes. I will care about different things. I will focus in on different things. And so my end product should look different. And so the more that, that these builders can kind of like pull in data in a low friction way that allows for a nuanced me first output I think that that's the, the pixie dust that makes a big difference for some of these things from an interface perspective and from a UX and kind of like the light perspective.